highlights and shadows portion of the project. So just as an example, you should have started off when you're in Photoshop here with your outlines layer. And then if you did things correctly, then you added a layer for each thing like your shirt, a background layer, objects, and so on and so on, hair, Crocs, and so on and so on. So at the end of this, you should have something that looks like this with basic filled in colors, solid colors, right? But you're at the point now where you want to do some highlights and shadows. So here's how you're going to attempt to do the highlights and shadows. First thing is we got to just adjust your uh, layers panel a little bit. And what I mean by that is this. The top layer can have this regular lock on it like we did with the other ones. The rest of the ones that you actually filled in, like you can see here, he's got his shirt on this layer, right? There's the shirt. There's with it and without it. On these layers where you actually put stuff, you're going to unlock them with that regular lock. And what I want you to do instead is put this lock on them, this one right here. Now what that does is it locks down all of the empty pixels on the layer, but it leaves you still able to draw on the pixels that you put on there. I'll explain a little bit better and you'll see exactly what I mean. So first thing I'm doing is I'm going down the list here. I'm unlocking the ones you locked and I'm going to take all of these all of these and I'm locking them with that lock and you'll see why it's so important uh, in a moment the next thing is at the very bottom of your screen here you have your original pose the pose of your original picture you're gonna turn that on unlock it and at the top here where it says opacity remember in the beginning we brought it down to like a 45 or a 50 this time you're gonna bring it up to a hundred and then you can actually relock it all right, so it's locked at the bottom, but it's 100% now. And you'll see why that's important also in a moment. Okay, so it looks like this now because I turned on that background one so you can see the original picture underneath it. So let's do something like the, um, the shirt as an example first. I'm going to zoom in to the sleeve area of the shirt right over here. All right. Hopefully you guys can see that nicely. All right, so what layer is this? jacket on the shirt the the sweatshirt what layer is it on it's on his shirt layer so that's the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to click on the shirt layer and please remember you have this lock on that layer okay so i'm on the right layer first option for you is this you go over to your toolbar on this side and from your toolbar you select the brush tool like you've been using when you did your outlines so i grab that then at the bottom of my screen here where I can choose my color, that black box right there, you're going to click on it. The color picker is going to come up. It's going to look like this, right? Look like this. And now we want to do, let's say we want to do some dark shadow. So you started with this gray. This was the gray. Well, let's go a little darker like that, or maybe even a little darker than that. And I'm going to click OK. So I have my brush. I'm on the layer. I have this dark gray color selected. Up at the top here, here's the only other real important part, the size and hardness of the brush. So here, if I do like a pretty big brush and I keep it at 100% hard and all the settings normal and 100 and 100 just like you had before. And you go over to this area and you start to paint, look what happens. If I try to paint over here, nothing happens because we locked down all of the empty stuff. But if I try to draw in here, it will let me, no problem. So I have a dark, hard brush, and I'm on the layer. And I, what I could do is just kind of st start to brush like this. Right? And I can get now. He has it all on one, pit, all on one uh, layer, right? So I can do like this and this and this and this. And I'm doing some kind of blobby sort of hard edge shadows right now. Now those don't look great. They're a little too rough. And the brush is really big. So I'm going to undo those. But you could use a hard brush just like that. Option number two, you go to your brush, same deal, same color. But at the top here, you're going to change it from hardness of 100 to zero. And if you do it that way, now when you go back here, you're going to get, and I'm going to zoom in again so you can see better, right? You're going to get a soft looking blend. Do you see that? It's kind of fuzzy. The bigger you make the brush, the fuzzier it's going to look. See that? And I could cross that across, you know, like all of the side of you. And I could do it towards the bottom. I could do it a little bit here on the shoulder. I could do a little bit here on the hood. 
and I'm starting to get some dark, soft areas. So that's the soft brush. Got it? I could change the color again. I could make it like lighter. I could put some light area like over here if I wanted. You see that? So you're combining now light, mid-ground, and shadow all with on the same layer using the soft brush. So that's an option for you too. I'm going to get rid of those for a moment to show you the next possibility. So we're still option two now. We're still on the layer, still locked the way we had it before. But instead of using the brush, this time we're going to use a tool called the lasso tool. It looks like a cowboy lasso. You're going to click on that. And then you go up to the top. You make sure you have this selected, which will allow you to do multiple selections or multiple drawings, however, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to start with the feathering at zero. And here's what happens with this one. Students tend to like this a little bit better because what happens is, and I'll zoom in so you can see, you stay on the layer, but you start to draw like this. And you can draw however you want it to be, very precisely. And you make a selection like that. You see those little selection lines, right? And then you can add to it. Like I can put some over here. I can put some over here. Here, 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 here. You can be very precise and very accurate. And then you just fill them with a the color. So you take your paint bucket, which is over here on your toolbar. You choose your color. Decide, like, if I want it to be a shadow, I'd go dark with it. And then I just fill it in. And if you look from afar now, and I'm going to do Command D to get rid of those dots. Command D. And you see what it looks like, guys? It's like a sharp edge kind of looking shadow drawn exactly where I would want it to be. If I do it again, which is cool, if you go to the lasso again, and you change the color this time, let's say we do, like, a middle ground, like maybe this dark. And I draw some more, like, over here. And I fill it, same kind of same idea, <clears throat> and I fill it with the paint bucket. It doesn't go over the old one. It kind of adds to it. So you see that there's two levels now of shadow, and you can kind of see where they both are. Okay, one more thing, one more thing. When you use the lasso tool, it has a feathering option up top right here, feathering option. If you make that option like a 10 or a 15, I'm going to put 10 in there. And then you draw with that lasso, same way I just showed you. After you draw like this, like this, like this, you draw on some kind of thing, right? And you fill it. After you fill it, here's what it looks like now. Do you see it looks soft and fuzzy on the edge instead of sharp? That's because here I took the lasso tool and I changed the feathering up to 10. So now it will come out soft. So you can draw with the lasso but still keep it soft if you want to. And the final thing is... I just drew all of these shadows for you, but I totally made them up. But in real life, you want to know exactly where the real shadow is. So I'll give you an example like on the leg here, okay? I'm going to move to the leg. His leg layer is pants. You see a pants layer right there? I'm going to go to the pants layer. Remember, it is locked like this. Good. I'm going to use that lasso tool <clears throat> like this, lasso tool. I'm going to make it... Um, I'll make it soft. I'll make it a 10 pixel one with this button. Okay, I'm good. I'm ready. I'm ready to draw. Now, here's the only other little new option is this. If you go to the layer now, if you hide the layer, now you get to see underneath it. Do you see how you can look underneath and see what the original one looked like? And it's under there. So now as you start to draw on it, you can decide, okay, well, here's a shadow. Here's a shadow. I see more shadow over here. You know, and then I see some more shadow this way. Thanks, Walt. And, uh, you know, add some shadow, add some shadow going down here. Oh, I see a few different shadows. I see this one. I see this one. I see this one. You could add as many as you want. It just keeps adding them and adding them and adding them. Right? Go up here. Oh, there's a lot of shadow right here. You know, I'm doing it quickly because I'm trying to make the video quick, but select them all, select them all, add a couple more, add a couple more. Right, And then you fill them. You turn the pants back on so you can see them now. And then you just fill those selections with the color. So I could go and grab, you know, a dark blue. And then fill them with the paint bucket. So do you see what it starts to look like here, guys? I put the, I put the shadows on there, on the same layer. They're fuzzy to look at. 
but they're in the right place because I kept hiding the original pants layer to see what they actually looked like underneath. You just keep hiding it to check and you turn it back on and you check. All right, so it's basically lock the layer with that special lock that we talked about, this one here. And then option number one, you use your brush with a hard or soft brush. Option number two, you use this lasso tool here and you can change the feathering if you want. All right, if you got lost with this, if you have another question about it, if you try it and it doesn't work for some reason, after you do your base colors and you try this and it's not working, come see me and I will help you out, okay?